So I've spent uh, most of my career in public broadcasting and had the fortune of meeting Tony um, a couple years ago, right when I was starting uh, Information Equity Initiative, and he's become this sort of vital entry point uh, for our organization into a larger international ecosystem um, of organizations and, and government agencies that are really focused on how do we equalize the playing field to make high quality um, digital learning resources available even in um, settings where high-speed internet might not be available and that that's really what our organization is focused on is how do we use the world's broadcast spectrum to send packages of curated digital educational content to homes and facilities that aren't fortunate enough yet to have to have broadband. So um, it's really been a perfect um, uh, organization for us to, to kind of align with and to, 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 to learn from. One of the ways, I'll, I'll, I'll actually be quite specific, uh, one of the ways that we're really focusing um, our efforts with regard to STEM and with regard to M Education Alliance is um, how do we pair our device and our technology with a small Pico projector so that um, schools in low resource settings um, can give um, high quality learning and instructional content um, to kids um, who otherwise just don't have access to that kind of content. Um, so I was actually just on a panel with Tony really talking about that and Tony's such a good coalition builder really focusing on how do we get other content creators and ministries of education and, and, and others involved in this effort to kind of make uh, it more possible um, and more inexpensive to, to make that sort of um, service available um, at scale all across, um, all across the parts of the world that don't yet have internet. So um, as an organization, we were founded by PBS stations in the United States. So we're operating in multiple states um, here in the US right now um, doing um, K through 12. So we're um, helping kids who don't have internet connect with their teachers. Um, we're in incarceration facilities focusing on um, therapeutic content, educational content, reentry content, workforce upskilling content. Uh, we're in public health facilities uh, in, with bilingual kiosks. Um, and we're just now starting to um, uh, speak with government agencies um, in an international context. Um, um, our service is interoperable in 82% of the world's countries. It's about 90% of the world's population. So anywhere where a country has adopted a digital television standard, we can work. Um, and the reason we can get content out to schools and homes cheaply is because we're using infrastructure that already exists. We don't have to install new mobile networks, new fiber networks. We're just tapping into existing television spectrum um, to make all of this possible. Um, actually, my aha moment is about collaborations. I've been in several, I've been on one panel, have watched several panels and met a whole bunch of people. And the common spirit really does seem to be collaboration. I think, and this is, I'm sure, not new, um, uh, but it, it was heartening for me to see that everyone, as they present, is saying that the only way they can achieve what they want to achieve and to do it at scale is in partnership with others. And that's certainly good for us to hear because we see ourselves as one small part of a larger ecosystem. We know what we can do, but we can only do it if we have strong content partners and strong local partners. And that has certainly been the spirit throughout the time I've been here, and it's uh, certainly encouraging.